Hey guys, Double Wide Six here, and uh, I haven't made a video in a little while. It's been about maybe a week, week and a half, and uh, we just really had some some cold weather here in the uh, east, and um, the the weatherman was actually calling it a polar vortex. So uh, it was down with the wind chill uh, to negative 22. So I just haven't been out in the shop. And uh, the weather is finally turning around a bit. And um, today it's actually supposed to get up to like 55 and rainy. So I'm back out in the shop. And I have a couple little things I'm trying to work on. I was out here for one day doing a little bit of work and I, I had my uh, pellet stove going and I also had my uh, propane heater running. I had them both going just to keep warm out here and I was out here maybe about four hours and uh, it was just miserable. So here's what's new in the shop. I got one of these uh, wheelbarrow powered compressor so it's a Honda gas compressor and um, this one was free uh, no it wasn't that one was 50 bucks and this one over here was uh, 150 bucks so I have two hundred dollars in on these things this guy said if I, if I buy the DeWalt one he'll give me this one for 50 bucks so I have them both um, let's take a look this one I already fixed um, what it came down to is uh, the engine had no compression so what I actually did is I switched out that Honda engine with one of the Harbor Freight Predator engines which is an exact match of the Honda and um, I put that thing on there and this thing runs flawlessly and the engine started in one pull and has good air compress pressure good air pressure or no leaks so um, I'm real happy with that um, and that's a look at that one and I guess today my plan is to work on this one they're both um, M glow E M G L O I think uh, it's yeah it's from Johnstown PA so it's a Pennsylvania manufacturer and um, what I decided to do was just uh, replace the engines and I'll tell you why so here's a look at the engine this is the uh, 212 cc engine from Harbor Freight the Predator it's exactly the same as the Honda GX160 so that's why I got it. It bolts on exactly the same and all the parts seem to fit exact. So that's why I went with it. The engine's normally uh, like 180 bucks. They had it on sale for 129 I had a uh, 25% coupon so I paid $95 including tax for the engine. Um, so at that price it's just easier to replace the engine and then when I go to get rid of these things uh, you know I think it's a really good selling point that it has a brand new engine on it so I did make one major mistake when I bought these things I, uh, I always check the engines for compression and the engine that was on here I, I checked it and it had compression and uh, basically you know what you can do is you can pull the starter um, and, and that's what I was doing. I was feeling really good compression, but I I never really dealt with a gas-powered air compressor and What was happening was I was getting compression in the engine because of the compression from the air compressor So when you know as soon as I got home and I pulled the belt off I realized as I turned over the engine that there was no compression and this engine too there's no compression on it, no resistance, so uh, that's why I'm just replacing the engines. And uh, the engine that I pulled off the DeWalt I have up on the bench, and that one's up here. Uh, I pulled the, you know, I thought a valve wasn't shutting, I pulled the head off this thing, and when I got into the piston, there was literally dirt in there, like 
you know, like dirt from the ground, and it, I, I don't even know how it got in there. It obviously, was left outside. Um, it had an air filter cover on it. It didn't have the the air filter itself, but I don't know. It the the piston was scored up, and it was really in rough shape. So uh, that that's when I started looking into getting a new engine right away. So on, on this compressor, uh, I was turning the wheel and checking for compression just on the compressor itself, and this thing had no compression. And I didn't, I wasn't really worried about it because I only paid 50 bucks for it, so I, I didn't really check it. The guy was throwing it in when I bought these things. So I got it home and I realized it had no compression. And what I ended up doing uh, last time I was in the shop, I pulled the head off this thing and basically up in here there's these little spring loaded air inlets that were kind of seized up with dirt and like almost like an oily substance so I, I cleaned that out with some carb cleaner and uh, I oiled it up with a little WD-40 and blew it out with compressed air and now you hear that duck sound that that's the sound of uh, the compressor working I, I noticed when I pulled off the head there's two pistons in here that were moving up and down so they look real good so I think at this point this compressor has good compression and will work so I'm just gonna switch out this motor and see what we get so these horizontal engines are pretty easy to change up there's a a bar that goes across here to the compressor. I'm going to loosen that. Um, I'm going to pull off this uh, uh, pulley and this will bolt right on the new engine. It's exactly the same size. And then underneath here on the base of the engine there are four half inch bolts. So I'm just going to lay this thing on the side and pull this engine off. Um, as I said, this engine has no compression, so once I get it off, um, I'll, I'll probably investigate a little bit. There might be a stuck valve, but if you look at the shape of this thing, you can tell it was left outside and abused, so, uh, you know, this, this engine's probably not going to work out. Um, it also has a stripped gas cap, and, uh, you know, the, the problem with these metal tanks is that they rust. I don't know if you can see it, but the tank's pretty well rusted, so it would need a new tank, and, uh, I don't know, it's missing the, uh, the, the control down here to adjust the, the speed for high and low, so, you know, just until you get the parts, this thing's going to cost more than 95 bucks to get running, so we'll quick replace it. Alright guys, my first problem, I'm trying to just pull this pulley so I can get to this bolt easily. This thing is rusted on there, as I said, this thing was left outside. Um, I was able to free up the, the locking nut on the back of the pulley, the Allen nut. So, what I'm going to do now, before I try and take my puller and just yank it off, little tip for you, I sprayed it up with WD-40, I'm taking a socket, I'm going to try and hit it forward, give it a good tap. And it's not moving at all. You can totally see how that thing seized. Try again here. There we go. I, I did get it to bud. Once you get it moving forward, uh, what you can most likely do, I'm going to add a little more WD-40 on there, is take your puller. This is a two-jaw puller. And we should be able to get it to slide out. Now it's moving. So all I have to do is work this out and we'll get it off. Well, I pulled the uh, motor off. I noticed the compressor oil has water in it, so that needs to be changed right away. And the foot pads on the bottom of this thing, there's three of them, the fourth one's missing. So what I've done is uh, I've taken some spare parts I had laying around and I created a foot that I can put on here so I'm just gonna bolt that on while I have it turned on its side so at this point 
It's about 20 minutes later. I got everything on there. The engine went on nice. I got the pulley back on the new engine. Perfect fit. All bolt holes lined up exact. I didn't have to widen any holes or make new holes. I used uh, a 3 8 impact ratchet to tighten the, the mounting bolts from underneath. And you can see everything's on there looking good. So now at this point with these gas powered compressors, the way they work is they pump up to about 120 PSI and when it does that the, the motor is revving at full speed and then it automatically drops down to idle. So the motor has to idle on its own and to do that there's this air powered actuator and I have to hook that up onto uh, this new carburetor. Okay, So it's actually going to tie into the governor linkage up above the carburetor. So uh, I need to take off this box and get that all wrapped up as well. So I've come to a little change of plans. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure the compressor works before I go and fiddle around with this automatic idle down thing. Um, I'm just going to try and start the motor. I put uh, fresh oil in um, the motor and I put gas in the motor. The compressor... Uh, it should run fine uh, eventually you know I'll change the oil on that if I know everything's working so what I want to do is just see if everything's working and then from there uh, I'll hook up that automatic shutoff thing so uh, gonna lose a little heat here I'm gonna open a garage and fire it up this is a cold start Well, seems to run good. I got a leak from my valve, so it's not really building pressure. But the, the air compressor is working. The problem is it's leaking out the tank, so I got to figure out what's going on. Well, I'm happy I tested this thing out. As you can see, there's a pinhole leak. Uh, I don't know if you can tell, but there's water there. There's water squirting out of this thing. And it's just because there's water sitting in it for how long, who knows but there is a pinhole leak underneath. It's just in this one tank. Um, I sealed this thing up. I put a new uh, coupler on there. So uh, I hooked that up. That held air and then when I pressurized it I found a leak in the tank. So uh, unfortunately this one's not going to be a go. But uh, I don't know. I'm not too worried about it. I could always use the motor for something else and maybe what I'll do is uh, uh, I'll try and get a, a plate welded on the bottom where this little pinhole leak is and just keep it for myself. So anyhow I'm double wide six. Maybe there will be a second part to this video. Uh, maybe there won't. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed it. and. Uh, I guess while I'm thinking about it, I'll show you guys the uh, the leak. I don't know how well you can see it, but it's uh, spraying out a little water there. It is literally a pinhole leak. So maybe I'll have someone try and weld it. Maybe I'll weld it. I don't know, but I'm not going to sell it. I'm definitely going to keep it. And... Uh, use it myself so thanks for watching I'm double wide six I have a bunch of other repair videos on my channel if you're interested have a good day